then you waited, so then you were five days more in Misrata. Yeah, uh, I was unconscious, actually. You have to see things for yourself. I've found that in so many aspects of foreign policy, and it, there is an inspirational aspect to what has happened here in Benghazi, a city that only three months ago was on the brink of being stormed by Gaddafi's forces with all the prospect of people being killed and driven out of here. Uh, now you can see the, the enthusiasm of people uh, for a free Libya. Uh, you can see the National Transitional Council organizing itself steadily more and more effectively. And it does make a difference to see these things on the ground, as well as, of course, to be able to discuss directly with them uh, their continuing needs and their plans for the future. Except in Miserata, where there has been some movement, really the front line uh, between East and West hasn't really moved for, what, two months? The rebels control the East, Gaddafi still owns the West. Is it a stalemate? It's true that that uh, east-west front line and the Brega area hasn't moved for some time. But there have been important military developments elsewhere. Uh, everyone will recall that Misrata was under very serious attack by the Gaddafi regime. Now the opposition side do seem to be in possession of Misrata and making some advances out from it. Uh, there's also been quite a fluid battle in the western mountains, the Jebel Nafusa area of Libya. <laughs> and the opposition have begun to get the advantage in some of those areas. Uh, so although one front has been a static situation, there's been a lot of fluidity elsewhere. So this is not a stalemate. Is the real agenda regime change? Has Gaddafi got to go? Well, Gaddafi has to go. Almost the whole world agrees on not that. Not in the resolution, though, is it? Not in 1973. It's not in the resolution. So our military operations are in support of the resolution. Uh, but that resolution requires a real ceasefire, a genuine ceasefire. And what is clear to people in Libya, and now even to a country like Russia at the G8 meeting, is that you can't get that without Gaddafi departing from power. Some people see a bit of a double standard happening because, of course, President Assad is killing his civilians. It's happening in Yemen. It's been happening in Bahrain. They seem to be going scot-free. Well, just because we can't do everything doesn't mean we shouldn't do something. Also, we will always operate within international law, and it simply would not be possible to get the kind of UN resolution uh, concerning Syria uh, that, that applies to Libya. Uh, but the other very important point is that if Libya had gone in the other direction and Gaddafi had been able to reconquer by force his whole country, then the effect on Tunisia and Egypt would also have been very serious. So the, the entire southern neighborhood of Europe would have been very seriously and adversely affected by Gaddafi being able to do that. That means our own national interest is very much at stake in what happens here in Libya.